does a decent chunk. This Ivy Cudgel is going to do a ton, though. I love that animation so much. Okay, let's just get right into it. Ogre Pond is the best Pokemon to drop in the DLC. Well, maybe. Let me let me go through the list. We have Pheasantipity, Okie Dogi, Monkey Door. No, it's Ogre Pond. Ogre Pond is definitely the best. So we're going to do an Ogre Pond moveset uh, today. I mean, it's four movesets because if you don't know, Ogre Pond has four different forms it can take depending on the mask that it wears. That That is what the point of the mask is. Uh, I, I need to stop making that joke. But yeah, so Ogre Pond's really interesting. Uh, we're going to talk about it today. If you guys enjoy, do me a favor. Leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications because we are almost at 80,000 subscribers, which is almost at 100k, which is my goal by the end of the year. So yeah, let's get into it. So just starting off with the base Ogre Pond stats, uh, the stats actually aren't going to change regardless of what form you are. Uh, it's got 80 HP, 120 attack, 84 defense, 60 special attack, 96 special defense, and 110 speed. Honestly, all of these stats would be garbage if it wasn't above 100 base speed. That 110 puts it just one point below the genies, but 10 points above the likes of Chi Yu uh, and just other base 100s. And it's faster than like Urshifu, which is the biggest thing that this thing counters. Like it is so good into Urshifu Rapid Strike. So yeah, uh, I mean, the, the thing about Ogre Pond is it has a bunch of different abilities depending on the mask. And the grass form actually requires no mask. It's basically just you have this form by default. And we'll talk about a moveset for that. Um, right away, actually, we'll just get right into that moveset. So because it doesn't require a mask, your held item is completely free. Uh, this is actually one of the most basic Ogre Ponds you could run, and its ability is Defiant, which is one of the best of the abilities uh, that it can get. Defiant obviously being it's you get plus two attack every time you get a stat drop. That means if you get Icy Winded, you get minus one speed, plus two attack. If you get Intimidated, you get minus one attack, plus two attack, net of plus one attack. So it makes it actually really solid into like Landorus plus uh, Urshifu leads. You're going to get that plus one attack and you'll be able to threaten a KO with um, either Ivy Cudgel or Horn Leech. I actually, I so the moves that I have for this guy is Spiky Shield, Ivy Cudgel or Horn Leech, Taunt and U-Turn because I think that the grass one is uh, on the lower end of viability. When and you'll, you'll understand why in a second, but the grass one... Uh, it gets a speed boost when it terastalizes, and the secondary mechanic with Ogre Pond is that upon terastalizing, it does get a new ability, which is Embody Aspect. That's going to replace your old ability, so you lose Defiant, but now Embody Aspect will make it so every time you switch in on the field, uh, or every time you terastalize, aka the first time, you get plus one speed. That means, you know, if you lose the speed boost, switch out, switch back in, your speed boost is back. It's kind of a crazy ability, right? Um, and we'll talk about the Embody Aspect for the other forms when we get to those, but yeah, um... It makes it so Ogre Pond is actually just like a really threatening Pokemon. You can uh, get like increased damage from your mask as well. Um, or actually, no, this is the only one without the increased damage because it doesn't have a mask. So it is like the weakest attacker, but with Defiant, it sort of makes up for it. Uh, so yeah, uh, I didn't have Wood Hammer on this. You can have Wood Hammer if you want, but if that's the case, you want to drop the Focus Sash because they're sort of counterintuitive. Uh, Ivy Cudgel is a 100 base power grass move. That's a physical move. It has no uh, accuracy drop or anything. It's just base 100 accuracy. Uh, it's a very reliable move. You know, it's, um, I believe the most reliable grass move. Uh, Power Whip is 110, 120, and it has like 85 accuracy. Uh, Horn Leech is your other move. I think that Horn Leech is actually a suitable alternative to the Ivy Cudgel because it's going to allow you to take a fake out Horn Leech and then get your health back to 100%, allowing you to sort of recycle that Focus Sash because it's not going to, you know, be used up if you take a little bit of damage uh, ahead of time. Uh, obviously, because this thing has like weird Terra mechanics, its Terra is locked to grass, so you have to run that. Uh, and for the last two moves, I have Taunt and U-Turn. I mean, like Spiky Shield, Ivy Cudgel, Taunt, U-Turn is a really good move set for a Pokemon. It's going to allow you to stop Amoongus from being able to go for spores on your partner Pokemon. You yourself are spore immune and rage powder immune, so you can hit uh, an opposing Urshifu Rapid Strike with Ivy Cudgel or Horn Leech uh, with very little drawback, and you're just like a decent Pokemon. That being said, this is like the all-arounder Ogre Pond. It does nothing particularly well, uh, but it does everything pretty all right. So yeah, next up, we're going to talk about Ogre Pond Cornerstone Mask Form. So this one's ability is sturdy, and its Embody Aspect gives it a plus one defense boost. So this moveset is just sort of thrown together because we don't know what the metal looks like quite yet, but I think it's actually a very strong option. So Embody Aspect gives you that plus one defense boost. Because of that, you're going to be a little bit of a bulkier variant of this thing. Um, the one thing about the rock form giving you a defense boost is that Urshifu Rapid Strike, the Pokemon that, you know, you're meant to beat, 
sort of doesn't care about that defense boost, uh, and now your rock typing will make that neutral or super effective if you decide to terrestrialize. So you end up being beaten by opposing Ogre Pond unless you have some better damage output. You can swap out Horn Leech for um, Wood Hammer in this case if you want to try to go for that one shot, uh, but I also made this set a little bit slower. So yeah, uh, this one's going to be running 252 HP to maximize some bulk. We have 68 special defense and 4 defense because that uh, embody aspect's going to boost your defense anyway, so might as well just shore up the special defense with the leftover uh, bulk that we have after giving it speed and attack. 76 just hits the first bump. That's going to allow you to have a decent attack stat off of base 120. And the 108 speed is literally just to outspeed like Landorus Therian, so you don't have to worry about getting uh, earthquaked by that or you turned on. You basically just outspeed base 91, which is a really useful speed tier. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's also the reason I also went adamant and only outsped Ash, uh, Urshfu Rapid Strike, or not Urshfu Rapid Strike, it only outsped Landorus is because you're getting that defense boost, we want to make the most use of it. Uh, the main draw of this one is going to be Horn Leech and Ivy Cudgel as a combination. That Horn Leech would give you like some really good uh, recovery off of each attack that you go for, but the Ivy Cudgel is the most like reliable rock type move in the game. 100 attack or 100 um base power with 100 accuracy is really hard to pass up on like if we take a look at every rock move in the game stone edge like that's the high damage rock move it's 100 i think it's 100 right uh 100 base power and what like 80 accuracy 70 i think it's 80 yeah it's it's like a really inaccurate move uh stone miss is like the the nickname for it rock slide has a chance to miss i think the only other move that's like rock type that can't miss is Accelerock, which is really weird. Maybe Rock Thrower, I'm forgetting. All I know is that Rock is one of the best offensive typings in the game, uh, meaning that the way that they balance it is by giving it, you know, inaccurate moves. So this this like moveset just avoids that entirely. And yeah, Spiky Shield is going to be in basically all these movesets. And finally, Follow Me. Follow Me is really cool because as a Rock Grass type, uh, it's going to allow you to redirect spores away from opposing, um, from opposing uh, Amoongus and... Amoongus, you know, it ignores opposing Rage Powders, which is why you don't Rage Powder away Spores, but because you're going for Follow Me, it actually does ignore, it doesn't ignore that, which is really cool for Ogre Pond Cornerstone, and yeah, uh, this is just a really nice one. I think it's actually a solid option, uh, but I think that it's probably the third best. I, I would say that the Grass Form is one of the worst, though, um, and that the uh, Rock Form is, like, second worst. We're sort of going in ascending order of viability. Now, Ogre Pond, Wellspring form, the water form, is going to be second best or sort of tied for first. I think the fire form is the best one just because the immediate offensive power it gains. Uh, but yeah, this one's effectively running the exact same moveset, but as a water type with water absorb, you do a couple of things better now. You're going to always beat Urshifu Rapid Strike. It cannot touch you because of the bulk that you have. Um, we're switching around that special defense and defense investment because, like I said, it was just dumped in the first place after hitting our speed and attack stat. Uh, so that's going to allow us to shore up our physical defense since our special defense gets boosted when we go for embody aspect to uh into water. And yeah, uh, the moveset is just Spiky Shield, Horn Leech, Water Ivy Cudgel, which is, again, one of the more reliable water moves in the game. That being said, like Waterfall would also be pretty decent if it had access to it because 85 base power, or maybe 80 base power, I keep mixing up liquidation and waterfall powers uh, and a chance to flinch. Ivy Cudgel's fine. It's a good move. And you, again, have like that grass water typing that allows you to follow me away spores and stuff. So it's just a really reliable one. Um, defensively, getting that special defense boost means that you go pretty positive into uh, Chiyu Fluttermane. And even just like the bulk, it allows you to go positive into like Urshifu and uh, Chen Pao. Chen Pao isn't going to be able to one shot you with a crunch because you have that decent defense investment with max HP 68 defense. Um, Urshifu Rapid Strike, you know, you get walled out or you wall it out. And you can even uh, go for follow me in, into, uh, you know, surging strikes and allow you to regain a decent amount of health uh, every time they hit you with that. So yeah, uh, Ogre Pond Wellspring, really, really fun one. But we're going to get into my personal favorite, and this one's really fun. The one that I personally believe to be the strongest is going to be the uh, Ogre Pond Hearth Flame form. So Hearth Flame is a really difficult one to switch in on, to say the least. Uh, because of that... And also, like, all right, let me get into it, right? It's it's abilities mold breaker, which means that you ignore uh, disguise from mimic you. I believe you ignore multi scale. Don't quote me on that. I always forget how that one interacts. I think you ignore multi scale, but not shadow shield. Um, what else? So mold breaker also allows you to uh, hit a Pokemon with uh, Terra Grass and Flash Fire, which is a really common combination in Generation Nine. Uh, some Pokemon that tend to do this are going to be Armor Rouge. Uh, Sarah Ledge, and most importantly, Heatran. 
So Heatran is a very annoying Pokemon for fire types to take on because you get hard walled as soon as they Terra Grass. Despite being weak to fire moves, its ability Flash Fire makes it immune to fire moves, meaning that, you know, it gets to ignore the ground weakness that it had before as a fire and steel type. And now it just only is weak to poison, flying and ice moves, which are not the most uncommon moves, but in the current metagame, it can deal with it pretty well. So, yeah, um, especially since it's a fire steel type with access to earth power, it scares off basically all of those typings. Uh, and yeah, so Ogre Pond uh, Hearth Flame is really scary because its embody aspect allows it to get plus one attack. And something I forgot to mention earlier, all of these masks give you a 20% boost on all of your attacks. It's not just it's not just fire moves or water moves or whatever. It's just all of your attacks have a 20% boost. So because of that, um, Ogre Pond Hearth Flame is like a one shotting machine. Ivy Cudgel off of Terra Fire because the embody aspect gives you plus one attack. And also you have access to the 20% boost means that you're going to be hitting everything super, super hard. It's because of that pressure that you put off with this Pokemon that you're going to be able to get a lot of free swords dances. I've even seen some people run like Encore, I believe it has access to, um, which will allow you to scare a Pokemon into protecting in front of you. And then you go, hey, keep doing that. Uh, so yeah, the moveset that we have here is 60 HP, 252 attack, four defense, four special defense, 180 speed. Now, the way that I EV'd this thing is I maxed out the attack but the speed tier is we're going to outspeed base 100s, meaning that we outspeed Pokemon like Chiyu and Charizard, right? Uh, the attack is just maxed out and the HP is dumped until I ended up at an even number. Then I went down to an odd number and put the rest in defense and special defense. Uh, the reason we want to be an odd number is just because that optimizes uh, survivability from uh, non-attack damage, if that makes sense, like Sandstorm and stuff. Um, it's going to allow you to take minimal damage from those. Uh, and also when you get like Super Fanged or uh, Nature's Madness, you know, once they add the Tapus into the game, it's going to put you at 51% HP instead of 50%, which is a little bit useful in some situations. It just lets you eat like two Ruinations into a third attack rather than one Ruination, sending you immediately to 50. It's 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 a little thing you can do. Uh, it doesn't matter too much. I just like doing it for my movesets. But yeah, uh, Swords Dance is a very scary move to have on this guy. Uh, like imagine if they lead off Landorus into you and they're like, oh, I know that I get one shot now um, at plus one, or I know I get one shot because he's going to turn into um, fire. He's going to get the boost from the terror. He's going to get the boost from the mask. Uh, and then he's going to go ahead and hit me with like an IV cudgel. So I'm going to, you know, protect or switch out here on that turn. You can just sword stance. And then the next turn, you know, you're at plus two and then you go for, or you're at plus one because you haven't terrored yet. And then you Terra and now you're at plus two because you get that uh, embody aspect boost. And yeah, nothing switches in on this thing. The one thing you have to be really careful about is that um, Heatran, like the, the flash fire thing, like the mold breaker beating that, you can't Terra and then do it because you lose your uh, former ability. You're going to end up with Embody Aspect over that. So just keep that in mind when you're using this guy. Uh, I, he pairs super well with Chen Pao, with Fluttermane, with Iron Hands, with Urshifu. He pairs well with like everything. He's like probably going to be the face of hyper offense for this format. Um, you know, unless Chief Fluttermane just remains like one of the best. Uh, but yeah. Uh, that's going to be it for the movesets. Uh, let's just go ahead and get into the uh, showcase that I did. I only did like one battle, but uh, I think I did a pretty all right job at showing how it functions. So yeah, let's get into it. Okay, we're on the casual ladder. Hopefully we can get a game with this Ogre Pond team uh, where I can show it off pretty, pretty decently. This team, don't ask for a code. It's not going to have a code. It's literally just a hyper offense team I put together centered around Ogre Pond. Uh, how do you, what is it called? Ogre Pond Hearth Flame? Something like that. Um, I think it's the best one right now. A lot of people are saying that it could be Ogre Pond Water, but I'm, I'm partial to this one. Uh, yeah, that is a spupa, but we'll, we'll take the matchup <laughs> just so I can showcase how Ogre Pond works. Um, so this is actually a really good Ogre Pond lead, in my opinion. I should always be able to lead off with Iron Hands Ogre Pond. Um, the speed control from Booster Energy Speed Fluttermane will also be really nice for the Ogre. And I think for my last Mon, I get a ton of value out of Choice Band Urshifu. So let's see what we can do. Also, um, you guys should follow me on Twitch. I, you know, if you're not subscribed here already, but you should follow me on Twitch. I actually do all my live streams over on Twitch, and a lot of people don't know that. They say, when do you stream? I don't see you stream on YouTube. It's because I stream over on Twitch. I'm a Twitch partner, so I have to stream over there. I might switch over to YouTube. Could be more profitable, but right now I don't like putting all my eggs in one basket. All right, as we see... The Spupa lead. Now, Spupa is annoying because it has Friend Guard. I already know what they want to do here. Um, I'm going to take this opportunity to Swords Dance up and Fake Out onto 
the Kamoa. Because I'm not too concerned with the uh, the Spupa. Actually, I don't even know if Spupa gets Sleep Powder. It might. I could be in trouble. Luckily, until we Terra, our Ogre Pond is immune to Sleep Powder. It's also immune to Rage Powder. I could just go for the KO right now. Ooh. Okay, so I think what I want to do here is... Do they have a fake-out Pokemon in the back? They don't have a fake-out Pokemon. I should be fine to do this. Um, I'm going to... Well, Ivy Cudgel the, the Spupa right now, right? And I'm going to go into my speed-boosting Fluttermane. And if they do end up going for, like, a uh, Clang or a Soul, what I can actually do is force them to basically have to Terra, because they don't want to have to eat a Dazzling Gleam from this thing. Also, we'll be turning off Friend Guard, which is, like, one of the main points of running Spupa. Hopefully they're not Terra in the Spupa. I'm hopefully, yeah, it's just the Kamoa. As it is Terra normal, are they going to Boom Burst me? I don't think they Boom Burst. That'd be really weird. All right. Oh, they are going to Boom Burst. Um, do I eat that? That that's a weird play. I hope I hope I can eat that. Okay, yeah, we eat that pretty all right. He does have a Throat Spray, but that's 100% within range of uh, Ivy Cudgel. And I'm not going to Terra here, because there's just not really a point to it. Uh, I'll Ivy Cudgel, and I'll also go for the Dazzling Gleam. Yeah, my guy should always be faster, too. As they protect. Do they have Sleep Powder? I legitimately don't know Spupa's moveset. All I know is as friend guard. It shouldn't matter though. Like next time we just KO the Kamo anyways. And I haven't used up my Terra. Stun Spore. I'm sorry. I'm part grass type, buddy. Oh, they go for that. Interesting. Yeah, uh, we'll just Ivy Cudgel again. Um, and I don't really see a point in... Let me make sure I max speed. Or, not max speed, but I'm 168, I think? Yeah, 168. So yeah, I'm, I'm always going to be faster than this Kamoa. It's always going to drop. There's not really a reason not to just also go for a Shadow Ball into the Spupa. Because plus 2 Ivy Culture does too much. Yeah, we'll Dazzling Gleam to be safe. It's not like I'm concerned about anything really KOing me. Yeah, we're good. Does a decent chunk. This Ivy Cudgel is going to do a ton, though. I love that animation so much. I love that animation, dude. And yeah, I actually think that Fluttermane plus uh, Terrifier... Um, Terrifier Ogre Pond is going to be, like, really, really good. Pretty much just because you have, like, the option to, like... Icy Wind everything, right? So like here, I can just Ivy Cudgel and Dazzling Gleam. Yeah, ID Gleam here because I'm just concerned about um, Focus Ash and the Obama Snow. Ivy Cudgel will also ignore the Rage Powder because we're still Grass type. We haven't Terrid. That thing's gone. Nice. And I'm assuming they have a... I'm going to assume it's, um, what's it called? It's a Titan in the back? Yeah. So luckily, because we're Speed Booster Flutter, we should always outspeed. I can just go for Icy Wind. And a Spiky Shield. As they forfeit. Nice. So we didn't get to do the Terra, but it's not really necessary in a lot of Ogre Pond situations. Like, the Terra is meant to, like, scare your opponent and be like, I'm taking a KO right now, because that Terra... You know, the Embody Aspect gives you plus one attack. That's ridiculous. Like, it is very, very difficult to switch in on that. Um, it basically turns off any Intimidate they might have gone for. And yeah, while while this version of the 
Ogre Pond does have to use its held item on, you know, the Terra. Uh, it is really nice having that secondary typing of fire in. You know, the regular Ogre Pond does have Defiant and an item slot. I don't know. I'm still a big fan of the uh, fire version. I think it's the easiest one to slap onto a team, and it just does t it does pretty well in everything. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed, you know, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications, and uh, I'll see you in the Ogre Pond Showcase coming out on Tuesday, Wednesday. I don't know. We'll figure it out. See you.